Hello, thank you very much for coming. I'd like to begin by asking you to do something for me. Would you please put your hands to your head and very gently feel your own head? Now, that might seem like a very easy thing to do, but I can assure you... OK, put them down now. I can assure you that a man-made instrument that did that would be a very, very difficult thing to make. It would be a very, very expensive thing to make. As your arms go up there, precision instruments in your muscles are monitoring the exact position of all your muscles. Thousands of sensory endings in your fingers are feeling the exact texture of your hair, the shape of your ears, the shape of your skull. Your brain is measuring the width of your skull with the greatest of precision. If a human factory were to manufacture an instrument, a robot arm capable of doing that, it would cost something in the region, I would think, of a hundred million pounds. Now think about what is between your hands when you do that, your brain. The brain is a kind of computer, but it's a computer such as no human factory has ever turned out. If we ever do succeed in making a computer with the performance of a human brain, I would guess that the research and development costs would be in the region of thousands of millions of pounds. Yet heads like yours and hands like yours are manufactured daily, millions of times over. A woman can do it with no research and only nine months' development and only a little help from a friend. <laughs> Life makes the wonders of technology seem commonplace. So where does life come from? What is it? Why are we here? What are we for? What is the meaning of life? There's a conventional wisdom which says that science has nothing to say about such questions. Well, all I can say is that if science has nothing to say, it's certain that no other discipline can say anything at all. But in fact, of course, science has a great deal to say about such questions. And that's what these five lectures are going to be about. Life grows up in the universe by gradual degrees, evolution. And we grow up in our understanding of our origins and our meaning. Of all the world's societies, the majority have practiced some form of ancestor worship. This is a totem of one particular cult of ancestor worship. Now, I'm not going to encourage you to worship your ancestors. I'm not going to encourage you to worship anything. But it is true that ancestors hold the key to understanding the meaning of life. <coughs> now, you might think it's easy enough to be an ancestor. It's easy enough to reproduce, or relatively easy. But to become an ancestor, you've got to have descendants alive many generations hence. And that's more of a tall order. We can think about it by going back to one of the simplest sorts of animals, a bacterium, right back at the beginning of life. And think about how many bacteria there would be after, say, 50 generations of reproduction. And we're going to illustrate this by folding paper. Now, I wonder if I could have two volunteers to fold the paper, right there and, yes, there. Okay. Come down here, please, and take the paper from Bryson. Right, now, every time you fold the paper, that's going to represent one generation of reproduction. So we start with one bacterium. That's one thickness of paper. Now, fold it. Yes, if you both go to the same end, it might be easier. Now we've got two. That's right. Crease it down there. That's right. Fold it. And then fold it across this way. Thank you. And just go on folding it until you've done it 50 times. <laughs> so what have we got to now? Four? Four bacteria? Right, eight. Sixteen. Thirty-two. Well, can't you do any more? Right, that's probably... All right, it looks though they're not going to make it. We're going to have to resort to mathematics to calculate um, how thick that paper would be. OK, thank you very much. Do sit down. Okay.
In every generation, of course, the thickness of the paper doubles. So we go 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and so on. We go on multiplying by 2 50 times. After we've multiplied by 2 50 times, what have we got? We've got a very big number indeed. We've got, in fact, a thousand trillion, at one with 15 noughts after it. The sheet of paper is a tenth of a millimetre thick. If you multiply that by a thousand trillion, you end up with, I've got it written down here, a hundred million kilometres. The thickness of the paper would take us out to the orbit of Mars. The number of bacteria after a mere 50 generations is that. But 50 generations is nothing to bacteria. They can get through 50 generations in a day. After about a week, bacteria, the number of bacteria would be more than a billion times the number of atoms in the known universe. Well, that's called exponential growth, what mathematicians call exponential growth. We'll come back to it. Needless to say, it doesn't happen to the same extent, at least. After a point, natural factors come to regulate the size of the population of bacteria. Our original assumption that it was easy to become an ancestor was wrong. Only an elite become ancestors. You can do the same sort of calculation, by the way, for ourselves or for elephants, as Charles Darwin did, and it just takes a little bit longer, but the same idea is there. After a fairly short number of years, you'll find that the entire universe is filled with elephant flesh or human flesh or whatever it is. So it follows that most organisms that are born must die without becoming ancestors, without becoming distant ancestors. Only an elite are destined to become ancestors. Well, some people don't like the word elite, but I just mean that it won't be all luck which ones end up ancestors. The ones that are going to be ancestors will tend to be the ones that are good at it. They'll tend to be the ones that have what it takes, what have what it takes to survive, to get a mate, to reproduce, to avoid being eaten, to find food, to be good parents, and so on. That's really just a way of putting Darwin's theory of natural selection. Because we that are left, we that survive, ha will have inherited the genes of a long line of successful ancestors. We'll have inherited whatever it took to make them successful as ancestors. <coughs> but for the moment, I want to emphasize something else, which is that we are lucky to be alive. We're lucky to be alive because it would have been so easy for our ancestors not to have been here. It would have been so ast astronomically probable that somebody else would have been here rather than us. And we're lucky to be alive for another reason. Think about it this way. The universe is about 14,000 million years old. That's 140 million <coughs> centuries. Some 60 million centuries from now, the sun will become a red giant and engulf the earth. So there 